Hello and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your City. I'm Courtney Bloomer here in the Brewery Arts Center Media Center with this week's guest, Supervisor Jim Shirk. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. Now, uh, we have uh, here some, some questions that, that uh, you have uh, submitted so that we can discuss the last couple Board of Supervisor meetings. Right. Uh, so let's get started. All right. Now, these uh, first couple uh, issues here are regarding the meeting that took place back a, a couple weeks ago on June 18th. Uh, and so starting out here with the first question regarding agenda item 18, which uh, was in reference to a real property tax rule uh, in uh, Empire Ranch Road. There had been some confusion about this item. Uh, what occurred? Correct. At the board meeting, it was um, motioned that it would be uh, removed from the agenda item. And after the board meeting, I went and spoke with the treasurer to find out the background of this agenda item. She told me at that time that the city district attorney had emailed her and city staff that this agenda item would be pulled. So prior to the board meeting, we knew this agenda item would be pulled. And why I bring this up is because board members are laboring over this thick packet of agenda items. And if something is to be removed, we should be notified when it's removed. And I've requested this prior. And so I just want to remind staff that we should get notice when something is going to be removed prior to the board meeting. Okay. Um, agenda item 24C at that same meeting uh, dealt with Marathon Staffing. Uh, they're a company that provides temporary staffing for the city. Their contract had been not to exceed one and a half million dollars. Uh, you voted against this agenda item. Um, could you let our viewers know why? Yes. Um, the packet itself had no documentation of uh, the employees that we get through Marathon uh, Staffing. Uh, which department utilizes them, what their employment records are, or how much staffing we actually acquire from Marathon. Um, at the board meeting itself, we did have department heads come forward and discuss the, uh, how important it is to get uh, employees from this uh, organization. However, without the, pro pro without the proper documentation of how the money was spent the previous year, I personally could not vote for a contract in the amount of $1.5 million without knowing how the money was previously spent and how we project how it will be spent in the future. For that reason, I personally voted against it. Okay. And moving on at the same board meeting, um, agenda item 24E had to do with uh, the contract for here, the Brewery Arts Center. Uh, this item had been pulled. Uh, from the agenda, why was that? Well, when this agenda item, when the um, participants were called to the podium and, and they sat there, uh, the representative of BAC, uh, a board member asked for a motion to extend the contract for six months. And I believe that was because after the meeting, I, I, I discussed this with board members, and that was because in the packet itself, we personally did not have the opportunity to preview uh, the budget or other documentations that were relevant to uh, the Brewery Arts Center. In other words, our packet had nothing in it. And so we were going to give a, f we would probably be receiving a formal presentation at the board meeting, but without having adequate time to look at anything. I think that's why the board motioned to extend the contract for six months. However, at the board meeting, I think it's kind of important to mention that the contract for the Brewery Arts Center was up on June 30th. And we were at the board meeting June 18th. That's eight working days before the contract was to expire. I don't think this is a timely manner to do it. I think we need more uh, lead time to look at contracts. Also, during open discussion, I talked with staff about the Brewery Arts Center uh, during open discussion, asking how much money have we invested in it for repairs, maintenance, and upkeep. And the reason I asked for that is because maybe we should look at it at a long-term um, donation to the Brewery Arts Center, maybe just give it entirety to the Brewery Arts Center, not lease it where we have to keep and maintain the maintenance on the building. Maybe it's something we can look at and just donate it outright fully to the BAC. And I think that would be maybe most appropriate. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, moving forward with that. Um, okay, on the, uh, also back to June 18th, uh, agenda 27B, um, 
This uh, agenda item was dealing with the one eight cent sales tax funding um, for the animal shelter. Um, this project had previously gone out to bid. Why did it come back to the board? It did come back to the board and it was approved. And a little history of this and why I wanted to discuss it was because at the time when the previous board, that's when John McKenna sat on the board, approved funding for this animal shelter, we had $4 million set aside. Out of that $4 million, the previous board approved $3.7 million. Staff then took that funding mechanism, went to an architect who made the architectural drawings. They took those drawings and put them out to open bid. They came back and the bids all came in and above $3.7 million. So why we had this agenda item in the past was staff was asking the Board of Supervisors the present day board supervisors, which is different than who approved $3.7 million earlier. So the present day board was asked to increase the funding to allow the construction of the uh, animal shelter. So from $3.7 million, which was previously approved, the new board was asked to approve $3,999,999.99 of the original $4 million. However, However you look at this, we increased the funding from 3.7 to 3.9 million. That is an increase in taxes and the burden will be, paced, be placed upon the citizens to repay. What was previously approved and what is approved at the new board meeting, there is a big difference in the amount of money. And I believe that any increase should not have been uh, approved. And so for that reason, I voted against the $3.9 million to fund the animal shelter. Okay. Um, now, that's all the things uh, that happened uh, on June 18th. There was another board meeting on, uh, on July 2nd, right before uh, the long weekend here for the 4th of July. Um, at that meeting, item, agenda item 21A uh, was uh, in reference to a Carson City Community Development Block Grant for $25,000 that had been given to Ventana Sierra for youth housing but they uh, then canceled this project. Um, what happened to that funding? That funding was an interesting agenda item. Uh, block grant funding was approved by the board and usually goes to nonprofit organizations to help fund their projects, which help the community in itself. Um, at this board meeting, the staff was also asking for that $25,000. And what they wanted to do with it was use it for the lift at the brick, which has been malfunctioning uh, for some time. However, if you, if you look at the history of the brick, um, the board bought the brick back in 2013, if memory serves me right. Uh, at that, when you read the contract, it said for the, they knew fully what was in the brick, that lift, they knew what data was installed, the, the history of the lift and the maintenance of the lift. So what we have is the city staff is asking for the $25,000, which we gave to a nonprofit organization. They can't use it. They returned it. At that same meeting, Fish and the Carson City um, School District was asking for the $25,000 to finish up their projects, which would help community uh, children and would help uh, Fish on the uh, low side income families. And um, I just cannot uh, approve giving what we gave to a nonprofit organization and take back and give to the city when the city had found $65,000 to fix the elevator over in the library, we're now confronted with a situation where we cannot find $25,000 to fix a lift in the brick building, which we own and we bought knowing the condition of the lift. So for that reason, I voted against this. And what did end up happening? The city did acquire the $25,000 to fix the lift in the building. Okay. Um, now, close on the heels of that at the meeting, that was Agenda 21A, Agenda Item 21B, um, Carson City Growth Management uh, increasing commercial and industrial daily youth use, excuse me, from 7,500 7, gallons to 15,000 gallons. Uh, how does this affect Carson City? I don't think at this time um, it will have much effect on Carson City staff made a great presentation as to why we should increase the allotment uh, to that higher number. Um, they're, I think, projecting out ahead. I don't think it'll have any effect with the, with the grout on citizens or with businesses coming here. It may help business come here, actually. Um, in the respect that 
it, it will not have any side effects either, such as growth management, planning, the board of uh, supervisors, and the uh, building department will still be able to look at and have access to what businesses are coming here. So in that respect, it's good. Also in that agenda item, there was references made about how many building permits will be issued for residential residents. Um, and also in that packet, there was a letter from the sheriff's department and from the fire department. And they talked in particular about Schultz Ranch and the time response it will take to um, go there should there an emergency arise. And both the sheriff and the fire department in their letters in that package had made reference they have a shortage of manpower the time lapse from when the call comes in to when they can respond is increasing in time because they're low in manpower and they're, we're getting more residents here. So 20 years ago, we couldn't uh, set aside money for the animal shelter and we had to pass a tax to build it. Here we have reference from the two of the de biggest departments within our city, the sheriff's department and the fire department saying they have trouble with manpower. We need to pay attention to this today so we don't go 20 years and wonder how to fix the problem. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting going forward to see how that is addressed at a future uh, board meeting. Um, that's all the questions that we have here. Uh, there's just a couple of minutes uh, left. Do you have any, any other things that you want to touch, touch on before we go? I appreciate that. Thank you. And I brought my notes so I can keep track of my thoughts as well. Uh, on the city, city manager's goals and uh, what he's supposed to achieve within the next year. They asked for each board member to uh, contribute to what they thought was important. And my first one was uh, to improve our city website, which is uh, on the city website, and to include a Spanish link for our Spanish community for access. And I also asked to encourage department managers to give an update to the board in person on a rotating basis and improve the method of overseeing contract dates when they will be expired, such as the Brewery Arts Center eight days prior to. I also think we should look at the grant program and maybe hire a full-time grant person because I think we're missing a lot of money and funding which could help our community. And in closing at the open discussion, I requested, um, I have previously requested and I did again for a noise ordinance to be looked at. Um, we may also need a drone ordinance in the near future also. Um, I also mentioned the downtown historic blue line uh, needs repair. Sidewalk is damaged, and cracked, and broken, and the blue line itself needs to a new coat of paint. Uh, I would like to give uh, credit to the uh, Carson City Chamber of Commerce, who put on a great show over at the prison. Um, I know it was well attended, and hopefully they can do it in the future as well. And I do thank you for your time here today and uh, for allowing uh, every board member to submit questions uh, and that uh, we receive from residents. These are questions I was asked by residents and I know other board members submit their own questions as well and it does help a lot. Thank you. All right, great. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this week's edition of It's Your City. We'll see you next week.